Hi everyone, it's Sean. Um, as I promised, I well, I promised you a tutorial. So this is what you're going to need to make your sock pig. Now, in no particular order. Um, obviously, the most important thing you'll need is scissors. Um, some good sharp scissors that will also like cut through the sock and like the thread and so on and so forth. So you need scissors right there. Um, a sock of some description. Now uh, I've just got some random free. Um, so you can go for like a stripe, so as long as it's one sock, you don't need a pair of socks, just like a sock of some description will do, as long as it's intact and no holes and stuff in it and so on and so forth. So you'll need some socks there. You'll need some sewing thread. Now what I'm going to do to make this easier for everyone to see is I'm using black, but of course you could use white, you can use any colour you fancy, but just hopefully make it easier to see. I'm using black. Uh, this is just polyester thread, it's nothing um, expensive or different. Uh, you're going to need some pins. Um, this will be for like to place the buttons and the nose and stuff, but I've, I always have some on my pin cushion anyway. Uh, for the eyes you'll need some buttons. Now you could just use one button, but I'm going to be using two. But these are just, um, you can get these buttons anyway. You can use craft, like paper craft buttons or sewing buttons. Um, but these will be for the nostrils and some beads now this is all jumbled up so I do apologise so I'll be using uh, round beads so, oh, so just bog standard black beads Doesn't, but you can use any beads you want but I tend to use just plain black ones to make the eyes a little bit easier uh, also you will need um, some stuffing I just use um, Hopefully you can see it. I just use high loft polyester stuffing um, just because it's easier because you need something to stuff the pigs with. And an optional extra for those who are familiar with me and my crafty crazy corn on the weekends, um, some coffee because uh, you need some coffee. So right, so um, let's get started. So first things first, we are going to uh, cut the sock and it is literally only three pieces. One sock does uh, a whole pig which isn't too difficult so I shall show you how to cut it and it really isn't that hard so all you need to do like I said grab your scissors now you need to cut it to you need to keep the heel intact but you need to cut the from here and here and then you'll have the heel so if we go from the top first so obviously you need to make sure you're not cutting the other side of the heel so what I generally do is I go from there and you just I go straight across so I don't mess about so you got the top of the sock there, and then what I do is cut here. It doesn't matter if this piece is necessarily straight because by the time you sew it and tuck it in, it will be a round ball. So that's all you need to do is cut your sock into three pieces. So uh, if you imagine how the sock was before, it was like that. So you need to do one, two, and three, and that's step one. Right, obviously we're going to put these two pieces aside because you don't need them for a minute and we're going to work on what would be the, where the toes of the socks go in. Now you just get needle and thread, uh, nothing um, rocket science, you just obviously thread the needle and just knot it at the end. Uh, nothing too complicated, hopefully you can see it anyway. So just like a bog stand knot at the end. Uh, get that ready and the next thing you want to do is stuff uh, this here. So this is where the, the stuffing comes in and you just um, well, stuff your sock basically until it's like a round ball um, I'll try and get it on camera sorry guys and, uh, just keep stuffing it until you're happy with it um, you can overstuff it if you want um, sometimes it's easier not to so it's simple and sometimes you just want to give it like a you know, get your frustration out, you just do that and we shall put all the stuffing on the end. Now you have excess here, that's fine, you can keep it there or you can cut it off. I'm going to cut a little bit off just to make the sewn up bit a bit easier. And um, for those of me that know me well, and we don't need something, we just get and it's gone. Right, so take your needle and thread. Basically what you want to do is <coughs> go along the top here and you just want to do a running stitch 
Um, you can either go from the back or from the front. Obviously, this part of the pig will not be seen, so it's not a big deal. So, because I have got it in black, so you can see. So, just sort of go one, two, like that, and just pull it through. Oh, there you go. You can see the black thread. Now, what I generally tend to do in case it is going to pop through is I will go back on it again just to make sure it's okay. So, just just to lock it in, I suppose. So back through, another running stitch, and you want to do this all the way around. Now you can, it doesn't have to be really, really close together, but it need it can't be far apart either. Just enough so you can, um, cause what you're going to do is basically pull it all together and then it'll come into itself. So, uh, like I say, not too difficult, just, uh, oh. if you can find a longer needle for this, it makes life so much easier. So, in and out, so try and do this so, so you get the idea of how the running stitch is going to go. And uh, normally you can do this quite quickly um, if you're sat up and doing it, but obviously, just so you guys can see it, I'm doing it flat on the desk, which isn't how I normally would do it. So I did say I do it slow, and uh, you keep doing that until you get right to the beginning, like so, like that. Now what you need to do is put it on its end. <coughs> and you need to gent gently pull so you can see how it'll do the round. Now what you can do, um, I always do, some people don't, is if you can, when you pull it, tuck your finger in to try and get the loose, now this is why I've trimmed the excess off so, and you'll see why I'm using black, so just tuck it in like that, so you can see, Then when you pull it closes it tight, except I missed a bit, then you just want to pinch that best you can and just go just basically go through it as much as you can and try and make sure it doesn't um, come undone and tighten it obviously because if you don't tighten it it will undo you so you just sometimes you might just want to hold the thread like there just to keep it wiggle and so on and so forth oh sorry I'm out of the way there like that and once it will stay there, you can just sort of, you know, wiggle it free. <coughs> wiggle free, wiggle free, wiggle free. And then, when you're happy, that's tight enough. This doesn't have to be solid tight, by the way, so. And what I generally tend to do is I'll get a loop here, like so. And I'll just go back through, sort of like that. And you can see how it will trap. Um, sort of how it will trap in between, so you can just do that and pull and just pull like that and then whoop, and it's raining outside like I say, I'm using black so you can deliberately see what I'm doing obviously you'd want to use a colour that's not so obvious and then just pull through and uh, trim it and you've got your body of your pig so there you go, so that's the first step of the um, the pig is already taken shape. Right, so you've got the body of the pig done. Um, again, get your needle and thread ready because you're going to need it. Um, you can use fresh thread, but I normally do enough to do it all around. So now you want to take what would be the top half of the sock, which obviously it is, and um, basically stick your hand right in there, like so. It's almost like a fingerless glove gone wrong, isn't it? And you want to take what would be the toe end, and you want to kind of grab it and just pull um, again sometimes it's easy sometimes it's tight and um, just basically get it in like that uh, you can do it loose I generally try and do it as tight as possible so just kind of get it around like that and if you're going to shape it now's the time to do it um, I always try and do it so you can't see the like where the um, toes join onto the main sock um, but it's up to you, however you want to do it, it's no preference, so do that and you'll see, you're going to basically repeat what you did in this, um, around this piece around here, but the difference is to hide the thread uh, instead of going that way you need to kind of go through the back because that will hide the knot uh, so again, as she says, try not to drop this you kind of want to do a running stitch again, so um, Right, so as before, in out, in out, like so. Try and do this left-handed. She says, 
So you kind of go up there. I'm doing it very slowly. So as you can see, when it comes to tucking it in, you're not going to see this knot here. So again, ooh, wrong way, like before. Just go back on itself, just to lock it in. And then you just want to go in, out, in, out. Just, just a running stitch, nothing, nothing exciting. Or if you want to think of it this way, think of it as tacking, like a tacking stitch. Oh, and I've just uh, lost my thread, which isn't really helpful. <laughs> I hate it when that happens. Uh, normally I don't need a needle threader, but sometimes um, if you want one there just in case, just makes it a bit easier. Ooh, get back in, there we go. Nope, I just missed. <laughs> Sorry about that. I did say I do it in real time, so you know I'm like, oh, I can't see. Get in there. So there we go, right, try again. Sorry about that. So, again, try not to let it go, so just in and out like so, so in, out, in, out. So I suppose you can call this like a running stitch or a tacking stitch, um, I think it's the same thing. So, and as you can see, ow, as you can see again, it's just going through, I just pricked my finger, that wasn't very comfortable, and you do that right to where you started. You can just bunch it up like that, make it a bit easier. Now again, when you get to um, the beginning here, you need to carefully tuck it in, but you need to try and tuck it in so the thread is a bit more hidden, so um, obviously try and leave a bit of uh, extra room. So just like go along where the thread is and just fold it under, I guess is the easiest way to do it. Now if you do struggle, you can always just push down on that just to give you a bit more wiggle room and again you just uh, just pull nothing will be there and again now with this one I like the first one you've got to be a bit more careful because this is what's going to be on view now again obviously I'm using black thread so you guys can see what I'm doing normally I would use white to um, do this it would help if I didn't actually lose my needle <laughs> threading my needle. Arr, so annoying. So once again refread my uh, needle because you know you know I'm not perfect everyone does it. Normally I'd do a, use a smaller needle for it but so try again. So yeah just pull try and hold it tight like so. Um, my mum used to add buttons like onto the rear end to sort of like um, hide it but I like it I just I think having a scrunched up little bum looks cute um, but I can you know I mean you can you can put anything you can put like a ribbon or um, like a bow is another thing so if you can see I'm actually doing it so I'm hiding the um the uh, black thread oh, and again just try and make sure it's um not on view so as you can see hopefully you can see it it's not too bad actually so I'm just going round and round just sort of keeping it tight once it's okay let go. But again, I mean, I am using black thread, so um, you can't really see it. And once you're sort of happy, like at the beginning, again, just have this little loop here. And go back through. Ooh, so let's try not to pierce her finger, because you know, pierced enough. So you can hopefully see it will come. Oh, try again. But anyway, lock it in sort of as so there we go so it's in between the thread and just pull tight and that'll secure it like that and uh, just weave it in or because obviously it makes it easier and uh, when you're happy with that just um, grab your needle and just uh, so now I can need that now what I do to hide the thread is I will pull it a bit so you can so it pulls out a little bit and sort of trim it as close as possible to the top and it'll pop it in so you can't see it. And so there we go, we have a body of a pig. So you can see how it's going to shape. Um, again, um, when we put the feet in is when we're going to start shaping it. This one might be a little weird, but <coughs> you get the idea. So that'll be where the face will be going right there. And that's going to be its little tush. 
So again, you can have bows, ribbons. Um, I, I prefer to keep mine as it is. So uh, the next stage will be the feet. So at this point, as you can appreciate, you've got obviously what isn't quite a face yet and you've got the body. <coughs> um, so what you need to do is get some stuffing. You don't need a huge amount of stuffing, just, just enough to, because um, this will be for the, the feet now. And again, you just want to get some needle and thread and get that ready to go. So um, just take a small amount of um, stuffing. Um, course it doesn't matter how much you use it is completely up to you it is kind of a personal thing so um, I, I am quite weird and fussy so basically get a little bit and just kind of make it into like a little ball I suppose is the best way to describe it um, so you kind of got it like into a ball there now all you need to do is you need to go underneath and to um, hopefully try it so you guys can see it without my fingers in the way so just push it in now you want two at the back and two at the front. So hopefully you can see on the angle, kind of like a weird bump going on there. So you now you need to do four of these, and um, you'll see why. So I will um, do these four. So again, try and get them all the same size. So again, just uh, make it into a little ball, like, ooh, like that, and just uh, pop it in. Sometimes it's not always easy to pop in. So um, I know it probably looks a bit rude, but yeah, you do kind of need to like squeeze them, and uh, if you can, try and get a bit of a gap, so like a little finger gap in between them, because it will make sewing up a bit easier later on, or later on in a minute. So then we got number three. So ball number three. And I'll see this will be near the front. You need to try and do it so it's a little bit out of the way. Uh, this bit will sort of come out a little bit, but that's okay because I'll see when you start sewing it down, it won't be so obvious. So uh, you got number three and number four. Now you can take as little as long as you like with this. I'm generally take a while. Obviously, you want to make sure it stands up. If it is going to be drunk and fall over, you just simply a case of just like move, move these about. So basically, you kind of like want two there and two there. And uh, so this one's going to be leaning forward. So that's okay. Leaning forward, all right. So. Um, you can do the feet or as big or as little as you want, but if you can kind of see, you can see where the shape is coming. So these are the feet there. So you've got your feet in place, and once you're happy with the feet, now this is where it can get a bit tricky, but bear with me. This is how it works. So again, get your needle and thread, and uh, what you want to do is you want to kind of go in like through. So these are the feet here. I do apologize. There you go. So if you imagine the feet, so you kind of want to go like underneath, really, and make sure the end of the thread isn't hiding. So you kind of just want to go under, try and anchor it to like the main part of the body if you can, and then just go up like so. Now sometimes this won't necessarily always work. Um, it does take a few attempts because you do have to pull quite hard. But what you need to try and do is do a running thread, sort of crisscross it so we're going to go down like to what would be the rear end so sort of go and you do need to try and catch the body bit that's the trick so otherwise this bit isn't going to pull in so um, if you want to do it that way it's easier so you kind of want to go in out and in and like I say a long needle makes this job easier so as you can see it's uh, having a, a piercing in a very uncomfortable place there okay oh, my thread's a bit so you'll kind of go here. What is going on with this? Oh, oh I'm knotted, that's why. Bear with me. Alright, I'm knotted. Can't be helped. Then once you go from there, you go across. So obviously if you've got clip, you try and you could try and do it as small as possible. It is entirely up to you. Then you sort of want to go 
along the edge of the foot there, again catching the body underneath. Like so. What I'll do is I'll just sort of go like round here first and you can hopefully see. So again go up and down just catching the body like so. Oop. This is not always easy. And what you want to do <coughs> is carefully, and I mean quite carefully here, is you just kind of want to gently pull it in. And I say gentle because obviously if you do it too hard you will pop the thread like so. And if you do the old pop that's okay. So hopefully you can sort of see how its feet are going to sort of be a bit more shaped. And again you kind of sort of need to anchor it. And then you go across the front. So basically you want to do this across like in a square. Then you want to do a cross, Ooh, quite literally. Except it's not playing ball. So it is this is probably the most fiddly part of it for me. I used to dread doing the feet. Again, you could always like hold the feet there to try and uh, keep it um, intact. Um, when I first did this I used to do squares out, just so stabbing myself again, but after a while you can sort of like just go round and make the feet a bit more, a bit more prominent, so, and again once you've got there just gen gently pull, just a gentle pull. It's basically it's just shape the feet and to keep the stuffing in place, so, and again we'll go round the back, catch him with the body. Now when you get to the back you kind of just want to go to the middle, you don't want to go any further, just to the middle so again, and that's a bit awkward to see, like so. Uh, by this point obviously because you've gone around it shouldn't be too bad. So you can sort of see how the feet hopefully are emerging. Now to make the feet a little bit more defined you kind of need to go from like here to like this middle here and do a cross. So just simply again um, this won't be so obvious in white, but I am using the colour you can see. So you want to go to the middle, and then you just kind of want to go over here. And this is the, this is like I say, this is really the tough bit. Um, so you kind of go through the middle there, and pull, and then you pull that a bit more in. And I mean, you can go across back again this way if you want to, you actually don't have to and then just go like that. Oh, and the thread's getting stuck. So when you pull it quite tight, hopefully you can see, oh, you have to appreciate the feet aren't going to be perfect, but again you can see where its feet are coming from and then you'll have a pig that'll stand up straight. Like I say, you get the idea. So um, what I generally tend to do is keep that on the end there. Um, You'll see why in a second. And the next part I'm going to be doing is the ears. So, yeah, or you can finish it off. So, if you want to finish it off, just simply like go through. Um, I don't generally tend to um, knot this off. So, what I do is just sort of follow it back through and then just kind of take it back like round here and then just sort of like sort of go through its so back end again. Just go through a bunch in the back end, like that. Get one last pull, and then you want scissors. Cut. And there you go. So it might be a little squash. So obviously you can like move the feet about and stuff, but you generally get the idea now. It, you have got like the feet shape. So uh, the next part I'm going to be doing is the ears. It appears my webcam is drunk. Right, so the last part and the fun part, well not fun part, I hate this part, is the ears now. Also you have the heel left over there. Uh, right, you can do the ears any way you want to do it. There's two ways, but what you want to do is you basically want to get two ears out of this. What I do is fold it in half like that. Now you can do this any way you want, providing you've got two pieces, it doesn't matter how you do it. So what I generally tend to do is fold it in half, like that, and then da -da -da -da, get scissors, 
Uh, you can do it one or two ways, but you can fold it in half and sort of go like that, and then you just go snip, and that's it. So <coughs> you've got ear number one and ear number two. So what I generally tend to do is, you can do it like cut properly or not, but you just want to get like two little squares out of it. So if you can see, so we've got one, two, and uh, this is scrap now, so throw it away. Preferably not on top of the computer, but never mind. And then with the bit, now it doesn't matter if the bottom meets at the minute and again at the bottom just go one two you've got another square now these will flip that's okay and that's scrap so <coughs> that's it really so what you want to now do with both of these pieces and this is the bit I, I hate this bit with vengeance so you want to take what is um, your ear basically so you've got that fin strip there now you can do it the right way but what I do is I fold it inside out so, so, sort of have it a bit like that. So you've got it folded inside out. Nothing exciting. Then you want to grab your needle and thread, and basically you just want to kind of go like around. So, um, some people have round ears. I I do my ears round. Some people have pointed ears. So if I just again just a bog standard run stitch. Uh, obviously it's this way around because when it comes time to um, turn it inside the right way around you're not going to see the stitches so it doesn't have to be particularly fancy just round and round like that because you can obviously you'll be shaping the ears um, if you're that way inclined so hopefully you can see what I've done like that so um, you can see that sort of the shape of the ear so basically you're just going to grab your needle and thread and just go like in around so like a like a fingerprint and then you want to go back um, so you don't have any gaps in your ears basically and so then you just go back round and round just like that uh, again um, you can do these as big or as little as you want the stitches because you're not going to see them anyway <coughs> but the point of the matter as long as you've got no gaps in the um, ears that's the important bit Right, so just round and round like that and then just round see this is boring I, I hate the ears I just find them incredibly boring and there we go now you can you can finish it off here or not it's up to you I just kind of go I just go round and round a couple of times because obviously it doesn't really matter so you go round and round a couple of times just so it's uh, obviously you don't want to do it at the bottom you want to see it's do it outside like that so just like that like that and then you just cut it and that's it and once you've got that little piece there uh, um, you can trim the edges that is entirely up to you but then what you want to do maybe you'll get a pen is just basically very 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 carefully <laughs> uh, turn it inside out I say carefully because obviously if you put it too hard but if you not too worried so just get your scissors like that and just gently poke it in uh, you could use a pen if you're not happy, comfortable with using scissors um, it is up to you so when you turn it inside out it's almost kind of like an oven mitt I suppose if you want to call it that um, you can just flatten it out if you can again it's not but if you do it sort of right you're not going to really I mean I know it's a bit rough but you shouldn't see the stitches really so like so and then just basically do like a little twist I mean I think I should have cut the excess off in hindsight but never mind um, but you get the idea so then you twist it at the end and that's kind of kind of how the ears are going to go so what I then do is I'll grab a pin and I just basically anchor them onto the pig ready um, so obviously this is the fun bit so kind of that, that effect nothing exciting and then I've already done it with mine and I'll explain it so you can basically I've pinned the um, buttons on the face ready just so uh, just so I know what it looks like now these are just these are just pins they're not anything exciting just pins so I've just I like to do it just so I can see what it's going to kind of look like I suppose 
so you can put the ears anywhere you want but this is why I like having them pinned because then you can sort of get an idea on how it's going to look it's like well I don't like the ears there you know I could plonk it there or you know all oh, the ears look a bit a bit weird there then doing it that way you can think well I'm not keen on the eyes there so I'm going to move the eyes a little bit forward or you know so things like that it just kind of gives you an idea on how you want the pig to look really so uh, you don't have to use black pins you can use any colour so uh, what you want to do is do the same again with the other piece there and then it's effectively it's just the getting the eyes and the nose done and it's finished so um, give me a minute and uh, I'll get the other ear done and we are on the final stretch ladies and gentlemen so you've done your ears and if you've got your buttons hopefully you'll see what I mean this is why you'll need the pin so if you can sort of see um, I've decided to name this one Scrappy naturally so uh, pins where you want your eyes you want to pin the ears in place and hopefully you can see where the buttons are now I've just placed the buttons in the middle uh, you can do this any way you want or you can use like one big button for the centre it is completely up to you um, but you'll see what I mean now so what you're going to do hopefully you can sort of see it on that one not that one and on this one as well we are going to basically do the ears and the nose and the eyes um, hopefully as one uh, if not it'll be however you want to do it you can do the ears separate and the eyes separate and so on and so forth so uh, what we do is the ears first so again uh, needle and thread nothing overly exciting uh, the way you want to do it you can do it one of two ways you can either go like under here like underneath and go from the top there or you can just go from the side. I'm just going to go from underneath, so it um, doesn't have to be anchored. Um, basically, you're just going to try and attach it. So, as best as you can, um, I'm not going to show the whole um, ear sewing up thing. This is why having the ears in place is also important. So, you can just like you know, pinch them down like that. So, uh, if you have got lots of pins, you will get caught it, it happens so you just want to take your time with this bit because this is what makes the the pig the pig and you just kind of want to go like in and out sort of like um like through the side back to front and that kind of thing so normally i do like a, a again a crisscross just to anchor the ear down which is um also exciting she says um again obviously you wouldn't be doing this in black thread um unless you're doing like a black pig uh, it's just so you guys can sort of see what I'm doing. Uh, so again, like through the ear and out from underneath, like that. Uh, this is what I mean by if you have pins and stuff. So if that happens, just lift it over and just uh, try not to get caught again. Um, yeah, just like I say, in and out, in and out. Just want to, you can do this. Um, normally it's easier with a small needle, but I, I can't find my small needle at the minute, so... Um, so yeah, you just kind of want to go in and out like that and you want to do that on both ears and when you're happy with how they are going to be sewn into place and it's very hard to <laughs> see that so when you're happy with how they're going to be or if they're anchored in and you're happy enough uh, you can pull a bit tighter just to sort of keep them in but like I say, this is um, this is probably, it's not so much tedious it's just a, a pain so just kind of go in and out however you want to do it um, you can do it to the point you can sometimes hide the the extra bits but that's okay if you can't and then simply just take the pin out like that and your ear will be in place and then you can just carry on going like round and round just to secure the ear like so uh, you can do this as much or as little as you like I try and do it normally so um, like you can see on um, this one for example the way I've done it you can't see the stitches I have done them like quite close and quite tight so you can't actually see um, where it is so yes yeah, so you want to do that with both ears uh, so there you go That's, uh, like I say I'm not going too mad with this so you just kind of want to make sure like anything if it's like a little bit there just again so that down in place just so it doesn't go anywhere then when you're ready to start the other ear, all you want to do is kind of sort of sneak it underneath like that. So you can sort of hopefully see about here 
where it is. Um, if you can aim at there, that's great. Or you can do them one at a time, but I generally try and do because it anchors them a bit better. So, uh, she says, trying to find the needle. Needle's gone, that doesn't help. So there you go. So you've got one ear dump. So you can start ear number two. I'm sorry my hands are in the way. Again, normally I'd be doing this like over here, not over there. Um, so yeah, so you've got one ear in. And again, you just want to like, kind of go in and out of it. Nothing exciting. Just uh, And obviously make sure you anchor it underneath as well. So just kind of in. But you can take all the time you want doing this bit. It doesn't have to be um, rushed like I'm... I'm you know, like I'm doing it. So, anchor it like there, back and forth, back and forth, and just in and out. Like I say, she's not going to be perfect. That's why I've named her Scrappy. And, oh, and obviously, try and catch these two, like, bits there as well, because obviously keeping them together helps. Because otherwise you're going to have an ear that will split in half, which isn't very and then again, once you're happy with however the ear is looking, she says trying to get the ears anchored in. Again, you take your time doing this bit. So, and uh, see, do a little, maybe do a little bit so it's a bit more anchored to the front. Um, also, if you're using black thread on black um, on the black pig, it's so much easier to hide. Uh, likewise with white it's easier to hide but this is what I mean if you if you know you're going to be neat you can use like different coloured thread but if you want to sort of hide a few more mistakes just kind of use the same colour and you'll be okay so when you're sort of semi happy with um, the position of the ear like so so nearly there Ooh, she says so I'm quite happy with how my ear is, just about, she says. So just uh we'll do one more. She says trying to get it in. Oh, not very easy. It is a it is fiddly. So once you're happy with the ear, again, just uh pull the pin out. And there you go. So just pull it a little bit tight just to I mean sometimes you can do the ears in such a way that you do have a bit of character in them. So, you know, you could always have one to like the side, you know, you could have one like that way, or you can have them like both like right up. I kind of like them a bit in between. Um, but how it works, it depends how it works for me. So, you know, just uh, do a couple more, like so. Now, if you want to finish your ears off, again, just like go like f underneath and f just undo it through the body. Uh, again, I wouldn't normally be this messy <laughs> with it. So the next part I'm going to be doing is the eyes. So when you're happy with the ears, it's fine. Now, obviously I've got pins in here that wouldn't be hard work it. So what I do with the beads is I get them ready and separate. So I've kind of got two beads already on a um, on needle. Just sometimes it's easy just to get them ready. So what I'll do is I'll show you what I do now. So uh, you get your needle, she says. Now what I normally do if I've got pins on the eyes is I'll take it, I'll sort of go from here and I'll come out to where the eyes are. So sort of come out about there. Now you can possibly see, I don't know if you can sort of see, um, so that's where the pin is and that's where the eye is. So I just kind of want to go through there. Uh, normally take the pin out, it wouldn't fall out. And what you kind of just want to do then is get your eyes that are on the needle and one at a time and just do that and just thread it through so it'll fall onto it like that so you've got your first bead there and you just kind of do like a very very small space again you can sew them anywhere you want so it's entirely up to you oops she says so you go through it and then you just want to get right next to the other pin uh, again don't let it drop out and you just pull that out so you know both the eyes and where they're going it's kind of just a rough guide of where the eyes are going so um, I like mine upright so I don't know if you can sort of see so you can you could have them flat if you want to but I like mine upright like so because it just looks a bit nicer and you get your last um, your last eye just 
like there and just uh, thread it through like so. Oh. Make sure the pig's not drunk when you're doing this, actually. Uh, just go down. I just want to do this, you kind of just want to crisscross, so just go underneath and you can sort of see, you can push down on the eye there. Yep. So you see what I've done. I've kind of gone underneath and I've caught it in between that one here. And you just kind of want to go back and forth just doing that a couple of times just to fasten them into place. So, and then just like that. And just go underneath and then up. Obviously, the closer you do it to the eyes, the better. Again, I'm normally quite a bit more, not so. Oh, just has loose in the eyes. So, again, you go through the eyes. You just do that, like I say, a couple of times. And then, when you're happy with them, just pull them tight. Like so. We'll do it one more, just so we get the idea. Right, so there you have the eyes. Now, if you want to, again, you can fasten off and leave it with that, but I'm actually going to go straight for the nose. So, what you kind of want to do from here. This is why long thread is helpful and sometimes long needle. You kind of want to just go down the side of the eye, and obviously, you want to kind of go through the holes of the button, which is going to be the thumb bit without piercing my fingers, she says. So, you kind of just want to do it. So, there you go. So, if you can sort of see, hopefully, put a bit closer. There you go. So, you can actually see. There you go. So, you can see where the pin's coming through. You just kind of want to pull that through and not get caught on the ears again. That's why you've got to be careful because you will catch on the ears if you're not careful. You just pull like that and then um, carefully take the pin out. You want to hold the button down. Obviously if you're doing one button it's not an issue but with two it's fun. So you just kind of go through that bit and then you want to go for the next open hole which will be down here somewhere she says. Now obviously this is why a smaller needle is a bit easier. I mean, if you really are struggling, I mean, this is the fiddliest part of it for me. Just kind of getting it started. Then you just kind of want to pull through like that. And then again, just carefully take the, the pin out. And you kind of want to go through there with the pin. And you're just going to, again, bounce back and forth however you see fit. Uh, with four hold um, buttons, I crisscross them. Um, you might be able to see an example here. So this was a um, like four hole. So as you can see, I've just crisscrossed it as uh, neatly as I can. And so that's what we're pretty much doing. You're just going back and forth. So I'll see you. Gone through there. And like I say, this is a fiddle. Um, the trick is you need them tight, but you don't. You can't have them too tight because obviously, if you have them too tight, they will just kind of go in and look a bit silly. So um, it's up to you how tight you want to do them. Um, but after all, I can just sort of gently tug it just to get an idea. Now you can do this bit as many times as you want. I I tend to if I've got quite a lot of thread left, I just generally tend to blitz it really. So like I say, I wouldn't normally use black. I'd use white. So I'll do it one more time through there and through there. Like I say, so it, it, this bit is fiddly, but you could do this separate if you wanted to. Right, so after you've done the nose, so there you go, you've got your nose there, press that down. Uh, all I do, because obviously you don't have to worry about fastening it off because you have done like ears, eyes, and nose, just simply go through the hole and just feed it back to wherever you want. I normally do it through the body, and then you just pull it through, and then you just want to kind of untug it untug it. Just a little gentle pull just so it will pop in like that. And then just a snip. And that's it. That is pretty much the basis on how the sock pig is made and obviously afterwards you can you know shape it in a bit more. If, it's, if the body's been a little squashed like that say you can always just do that to make it a bit fattened up and stuff. Uh, there it is. So there is Scrappy. So that is how you make sock pigs. Now see, take a bit more time with these. So there you go, everyone. Finally, after all this time, this is how the sock pigs are made. So, um, thank you for watching, and uh, I shall catch you all soon. So, um, 
have fun everyone and uh, if you're on my Facebook page let me know how you go with it or if you've got any questions again ask me on there or ask me on the questions down below and I shall catch you all soon so have fun and um, good luck see you later bye